They took in at least three and a half tons before they finished the job, and every wisp of hay then had to be carried by hand the half mile back to the village. As an exercise in primitive agriculture, the Iron Age village was beginning to be a working proposition. Not just an experiment, but a truly self-supporting farm. Then does anybody disagree with us handing it all out um, and each having a piece of it so we take a share of the bad luck? <laughs> Iron Age chieftains may well have ruled by the sword, but for volunteers from the 1970s, decision-making had to be democratic. There was a mysterious burn on the May Day cake, which reminded some of them of a Celtic superstition, and they argued for hours about how best to divide the cake. We, we started off with a very formal decision-making process where the cooks of the day, that was one couple, chaired a meeting at lunchtime and we discussed all the issues we needed to discuss and made decisions on them. And gradually, as the, as the time went on, this meeting petered out and, uh, and the, the decision-making process became more and more like a sort of working informal anarchy where you try to identify whether a decision was important or not, consult with a few people if it was mildly important, consult with everybody if it was a big decision, and there was a sort of consensus type of approach and decision-making really evolved as the year went on from a very formal start to a very informal way at the finish. The bean harvest was a disaster and there had been some people saying, come on, we need to get on and harvest these beans and some other people saying, no, let's wait till they get black and dry in the pods and then there was a big lot of rain and 90% of them or more dropped out of the pods onto the field. So that was a disaster. Fishing was another skill the villagers had to learn from scratch. They had the use of a stream a few miles from the site, but they didn't manage to catch many fish without modern tackle. So they decided to set up a big fish trap in a nearby lake and try the full frontal approach. Basically, we're trying to make a, a catching pen at the back, and we're going to drive the fish in. We're making a funnel to drive them in into the back of the pen, and hopefully, if we keep people on the entrance, they'll stay in there while we go around with nets or spears and try and f fish them out of the water. So we'll drive the whole lake right down up to this top end. John Percival re kept telling us about in Africa. When I was in Africa, I saw this and I saw that or I saw the other. And for him, the thing that he really wanted to do was to get us to go fishing African style. And he told us that this would really work because he'd seen it done so many times. was quite wide and there weren't that many of us and the gaps between us were huge and any self-respecting fish would know that you know going forward with this noise would be far worse than swimming through the gap and watching from behind so any fish that were there got behind us and we carried on down the lake and sure enough get to the end no fish however John's idea of how deep it was it was actually knee high for everyone so there is a, a lot of film of bare bottoms. What do I want? Yes. Well, I want it artistic, proper. Oh, I want I'm it artistic. To you know I'm artistic. Unless, unless you do it properly, my chances of being a sex symbol are ruined. <laughs> yes, yeah, so I was quite shocked. I think because we'd got to know the camera crew very well, um, they were coming maybe twice a week to film us, they became our friends. And we'd got very relaxed with each other. Um, taking our clothes off. We were very hot. It was a very hot summer. And um, we almost forgot that the camera crew were filming. And now I'm, I'm quite shocked to see, um, to see images of myself on, on the TV with not very much on. <laughs> Oh, 
There were several vegetarians in the original group, but one of them had swallowed her scruples and agreed to eat meat for the duration of the project. The difficulty lay in the communal cooking arrangements and in the lack of tasty alternatives to meat. Everyone liked eggs and cheese, but there were never enough of these to go round. The Ainsworth family remained more or less strictly vegetarian, and this meant that other people had to try and make special provision for them, especially for the children. The whole group also had to face the trauma of slaughtering their own animals. Emma? No. The pig had come snuffling happily out of its sty and been knocked on the head before it knew what was happening. But John Rockcliffe still had to slit its throat to drain the carcass. In here? Although they'd been prepared for it, none of the volunteers took the killing lightly. As they burned and scraped off the pig's bristles, many of them were in a sombre mood, but Lindsay Ainsworth was in tears. It's really affected me far more than I thought it would do, really. But even watching this animal be killed, what does it make you feel? Um, it just confirms that I'm right, really, I think, for me, personally, to be a vegetarian. The children um, aren't at all disturbed, Lindsay. No, I think that's good, really, yeah. I, you know, I'd like them to see, you know, exactly where meat does come from and to, you know, think for themselves when they're older. I mean, I, at home, personally, don't give them meat. <laughs> Watch out, another one coming. Did you see the pig kill? Yeah. Does that make you mind the idea of eating it, or...? No. You'll eat some, will you? Yeah. Like you, bacon. You like bacon, do you? Mm. You used to be a vegetarian at one time. Yeah, I know. But you're not but now. I still like meat. She just doesn't, doesn't give it to me, but I like it. Well, the general idea of the project was that we would try and live in the in the Iron Age environment, so that we would be eating and uh, using the tools of the Iron Age people. There were some people who were vegetarians and there were other people who were not vegetarians but who actually didn't really like the meat much. It wasn't necessarily very tasty, especially the salted meat, um, but we felt that um, it was important that everybody had a share of all the food. Um, in particular, some of the vegetarian uh, dishes like eggs and cheese uh, were much valued. Uh, and so when some people wanted to go without meat and therefore to eat more of the maybe in some ways tastier food, um, that did cause a bit of dissent. Um, I certainly believe that um, it was important to, to have the diet that the Iron Age people would have had because that was really what we were, what we were about.